Hello and welcome to our virtual lunch and learn today. We are talking about armor start connectivity. My name is Rachel Green and I'm the digital communication specialist here at McNaught McKay Electric Company. And presenting for us today will be Carol Weber, technical consultant out of our Madison Heights location. Out in the comments section, ready to answer your questions is Eric Dixon, systems engineer, also out of Madison Heights. And we'll have a Q&A portion at the end for Carol to answer your questions in more depth. We'll be getting started shortly, but we'd like to allow a few minutes for attendees to join us. As you come in, let us know where you're tuning in from in the comments. I see Eric is already out there. Hey, Eric, thanks for joining. <laughs> you can view recordings of previous virtual lunch and learns on our YouTube channel under the virtual lunch and learn playlist, and we cover a new topic every Wednesday at noon. So be sure to join us on your lunch break. For anyone just coming in, welcome to our virtual lunch and learn today, Armor Start Connectivity. Let us know where you're joining us from. We will be looking for your questions as you have them in the comments while our presenter, Carol Weber, talks to us about the history of Armor Start Connectivity and where the product stands today. Our specialist, Eric Dixon, is ready to respond to your questions in the comments, and we will have a Q&A portion at the end of Carol's presentation. If you'd like to reach out afterward or if you have further questions for Carol, you can send us an email at macamaclive at mc-mc.com. Be sure to let us know which session you attended and we'll direct your questions to Carol. And we'll also have that email address on the screen for you at the end as well. All right, Carol, looks like we have a number of viewers with us now, so I will pass it over to you. Okay, thank you, Rachel. Well, thank you all for joining. Today, we want to spend a little bit of time talking about armor starts, a little bit of the background and the connectivity on the product. So let's start with the background. The armor start was first introduced in 2004. So it's a product that's that's been around for a while and they've made some improvements to it over the years. Uh, the increasing acceptability of on machine control has been driving up the usage every year, really since 2004 when it was brought on board. The initial design was a conduit entrance, except the motor and brake were connectorized on the unit. Uh, eventually, device net communications and safety versions were offered. Uh, these offered a conduit entrance or what Rockwell termed Armor Connect for a connectorized unit. And now today we have Ethernet communications and integrated safety versions. Uh, in these newer versions, no conduit entrance is available. Everything is, is connectorized now. So let's start with the Armor Start LT. This was introduced several years after the initial introduction. It's a more compact um, unit. The starter version goes up to five horsepower, both non-reversing and reversing and two horsepower on a VFD version. The starter version is pictured on the left of your screen with the VFD version to the right. Now the LT is a smaller unit. It has a few less features than the standard unit. Uh, therefore, it's more cost-effective. It's also lighter in weight. It's integrated into RS Logix 5000. And applications that are well suited to the LT are packaging, uh, material handling, parcel and sortation lines, as well as distribution centers, which you can see in some of the pictures to the right. These are pictures of installations of various Armor Start LTs. You'll see on the upper right the VFD versions mounted on the side of a conveyor, and in other pictures, the units are mounted underneath conveyors, in part due to its nice compact size. You'll also notice that the connectors are on the base, on the bottom side of this unit. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the LT attributes. We've mentioned the starter version, which would, the prefix of that catalog number would start with a 290 for a non-reversing and 291 for a reversing starter, again, up to five horsepower. And the 294 would be the prefix on a VFD up to two horsepower. Uh, again, all the connectors or the gland plate, because you can get this still as a uh, hardwired unit, 
are on the bottom. It has de automatic device configuration and is washdown rated. All armor starts have a local disconnect, which is padlockable. You'll see that in the picture on the top left of the unit. Local control option would include using the HOA function if you select that option when you, when you purchase your unit. And you'll find configurable field IO points on the bottom right of the unit. As you see that in the picture, there are six of those. These are also group motor installation capable. Now the next version, the original version, if you will, was called just an armor start. And now we've got an Armor Start ST, the latest series. The reversing starter is available up to 10 horsepower. You'll recall in the LT, it only went to five horse. So this has a larger range. And the VFD will go up to five horse versus two horse in the LT. Now the ST has hardwired safe talk torque off versions as well as an integrated safe torque off version. And it also has onboard safe IO. Now, these are installation pictures showing the units being used in sorting applications, among others. They are used in material handling and assembly applications, automotive paint applications, and many baggage handling applications at airports around the country. It's also utilized in conveyor applications, case packaging, and bottling lines. So a few more pictures showing installations of the standard armor start mounted underneath or on the side of equipment. And in the center top picture, they are mounted overhead on a power and free conveyor that carries vehicle doors. Now, when we talk about the Armor Start ST, there is a starter version, but it is only in the reversing size. It is not, there is not a non-reversing available in an Armor Start ST. So you'll see the prefix on the part numbers for standard Armor Start always start with a 28. In this case, a 281 is a reversing, and the E is going to indicate that you have Ethernet communication capabilities on the unit. So it's capable of 65 KA SCCR, again, up to 10 horsepower. And you see that the, uh, the certifications there, UL 508, et cetera. Now the VFD version is again, 65 KA SCCR capable with the dynamic brake and the source brake connectors they're going to come standard on this unit, whether you're going to utilize them or not. They are part of the package. Uh, notice the connectors on the face of the unit for the motor power and brake. The brake connector is offset so that the right angle male cable will not run into the motor power connector located directly below it. So the silver right angle connector on the face of those units to the right in your screen that point down, those are the M29 connectors. By having them right angle, it takes them a little bit more out of harm's way on the face of the unit, plus you're able to bring your cabling from underneath, which is what you're gonna do with your uh, 480 volt power. So now we'll talk a little bit about comparisons between the previous standard unit and now the ST versions. You always want to look to Rockwell in their literature library and use their product selection tools. Uh, Proposal Works is a free software that you can download off of their website. It's very helpful. They have catalogs and selection guides in the literature library specific to the Armor Start. We'll go through some of those uh, a little bit later in this presentation. Now, the user manual also is provides a lot of detailed information when you're working on the design for your, your equipment on Armor Starts. So the main difference is on the left-hand side of your screen, 
you will see the standard armor start and on the right hand side, the newer ST version. There was an option with the original to order a three meter motor power cable and have it ship with the unit. Uh, that is no longer available on the ST. You need to order all of your cables separately because everything's going to be connectorized. So you're going to be looking at, at brakes, you're going to be looking at motor power, um, your control power, and your 483 phase. So again, the brake connectors are always present with the new ST ver version, and there is no option for a conduit entrance on these newer ST units. Now, in the next few slides, we'll look specifically at the cable connection differences. So first, let's look at the three-phase incoming power. On the left-hand side, this was the standard unit, and you'll see there were both M22 connectors on a 10-amp base and M35 connectors on a 25-amp base. So if you have both of these in your plant, you need to stock both cables in case you have a problem and have to replace it. On the left-hand side of the screen, excuse me, on the right-hand side of the screen, Rockwell has now gone to just using a M35 four-pin mail connector. So you'll only have one cable to be stocking. For the incoming control power, again, on the left-hand side, you see the 280E, the 281, and the 284E. Again, all Ethernet capable. The 280 signifying that you could get a non-reverser. The 281 was a reversing starter, and then the 284 was the VFD. So you'll see the control power is a male five pin, five, six pin, five used M22 connector, which would be connected to a six pin, five used drop cable, right? The drop cable would be connected to an M22T where you, you have multiple armor starts and you're linking them together. The top of that T is a six pin five used and the connection to the front cables off of that T would be a standard four pin M22 cable. The six pin five used was selected by Rockwell as a means to prevent miswiring with other types of network media cable used with their armor starts. The newer ST version on the right hand side utilizes a standard four pin M22 male connector. Well, let's look at the motor power connections. In the earlier versions, much like they did with the 480 volt three phase power, they used a M22 four pin female connector for a 10 amp base and for the 25 amp base, an M35 four pin female connector. And you'll see on the right hand side, the Armor Start ST is now utilizing, all of them utilize a M29 four pin female connector, which is a tri key connector. So they've again consolidated it here into just an M29 connector. And you'll see in the part numbering stream that the 281E has a dash and a star and an RRG. Again, you can only get the reversing version in the starter, but the RRG signifies that it's connectorized. There would be other alphanumeric characters that are in there for the rest of the configuration, but the RRG is always going to signify that it's a connectorized unit. Now let's look at the source brake power. The connector on the left side which is the older style, is a three pin M25 female connector. So it's, it's a little bit of an odd size, if you will, for a mini. On the ST series on the right hand side, the connector is an M22 three pin female. Now again, Rockwell has made this a tri key to try to eliminate people plugging the wrong cable into the wrong connector. So you're gonna find in the ST series that both the brake and the motor power connectors are tri-key. Now, I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about the ST with the integrated safety, as it's the newest product. We won't get into a lot of detail. 
as there's really enough information here for another complete session. But I think it's important to, to talk about it just briefly here. So this slide is showing the three versions of the Armor Start ST, two of which are SIL-3 PLE rated. On the left is the standard unit. Notice in the pictures at the bottom, the labels on the face are not red on that left-hand side. That would indicate safety if they were red as they are in the other pictures. The connections in all three scenarios are back to a Rockwell on machine PLC. The middle unit is the hardwired safety version. You'll notice the red safety IO block to the left of the unit in the picture. You would need to add this block for your safety IO connections in this scenario. As opposed to the unit on the right, which has onboard safe IO, you'll notice that the safety IO block doesn't show in that picture, nor does the safety relay. You can see it's a much simpler solution. And Rockwell has the only on machine network based safety starter and VFD with onboard safe IO on the market today. This is a little bit more of the ST anatomy for the integrated safety version. It shows an up close look at the connections on the network safety ST, starting from the top left, the app motor disconnect, which we mentioned for the LT, which is padlockable. Next, the user IO points, followed by the IP switch addresses. Then underneath there, we have two ethernet ports which support a DLR topology. Then on the bottom of the unit, on that plate, you will see the user safety IO points. Next to them is the control power connector, which we mentioned was a mini four pin. And the largest black connector on the mounting plate is the incoming 480 M35 connector. Again, all on the bottom. Also on the bottom of the unit moving to the right is the dynamic brake connector. Moving up on the right-hand side, the silver M29 uh, motor power right angle connector. And above that is the offset brake connector. The area outlined in yellow shows the status and diagnostic indicators. And at the bottom left-hand side of the slide is a reminder that these units are truly modular meaning the control module pointed out by that arrow can be removed without unwiring the base. This helps with MTTR on your plant floor. Now, I mentioned earlier in the presentation that there were some publications that we were going to take a look at. This is one of them that Rockwell has developed. Uh, it is a cabling reference guide. Uh, it covers all the current armor starts. Well, let me bring that one up in just a second here. Okay. This so the first first screen here is for the standard armor start. You'll see the six pin five used on the right side in the middle of the page. Right in this area here. They give you the receptacles, the cables, and the T's for each network. And then when you scroll down to the second page, they cover the motor connections. Now, the next one is the ST. If I can zoom in here just a bit, you'll see that this green line shows the ethernet network. And then the brown line below it is the control power. So they've color coded these. And then the black line further down is the three phase power media. And in each case, they're going to give you the receptacle over to the left to go back to your PDP, you're going to have the trunk lines, 
You're going to have the T and then the drop cables down from the armor start. And I think if I can go a little bit further down here, here's the LP that we talked about earlier. That's in here as well, and the connections. And the motor connections. And then they even have one in here for the device net version. And you'll see at the top here, this black line, this is the device net network. And then you'll notice the control power on these was 120 volt. So if we continue to scroll down in this guide, need to zoom out just a bit here. There we go. They show the specific connector information. So they're gonna give you the pinout, the connector itself, a picture, the gender, the size and diameter, and they'll give you the bulletin uh, of the, the product for Rockwell. So in the top example, it's an ethernet cable and it's a 285, excuse me, a 1585D bulletin product. So you'll also see on the left-hand side, they are color-coded by the type of network. So green for the ethernet, blue inputs and outputs, red for the control, six pin five used in this case, et cetera. And then if we go down, this is on a device net, they show those connections. I think I can get, there's the ST, the newer version. So you see the inputs, five pin inputs, you'll see the control power, four pin mini, the motor, there's the tri-key receptacle M29 that lists the, the cable right there, or the connector, excuse me. And there's the, the source brake in a tri-key as well. So this is a guide that you're gonna wanna pull down uh, when you're going to do your design and you're selecting your cables for your armor start. It's again, it's on the Rockwell website in under the literature library. Now, a newer guide that they have also just recently put together, it is also in the, um, the literature library, is this 280 PWR SG001B. I can pull that one up as well for you. This guide is close to 60 pages. And it's a new, new selection guide. It was actually published in January of this year. So everything that's new is in here. And they've included all of the the Rockwell products, all of the bulletins here that you'll see for the cabling. And it's just a little different presentation. If you give me just a second, here we go. It shows you the architecture, similar to the other information that you had on the previous selection guide, but you'll notice that they've put numbers on a cable or numbers on a T or a receptacle. And when you scroll down, you will see on the left-hand side over here, they correspond to item numbers where they give you the description, an example catalog number. They don't try to put in the, the length because obviously that's gonna change based on your design and your equipment, but they give you the start of the, of the catalog number. And then if you click on one of these links over here to the right, it will actually take you to that specific page. So in this case, the three-phase power receptacle, the M35s, and gives you all the details on that. So let me scroll back up here briefly. So this was a standard Armor Start ST, the first one. Then you get into the hardwired safety, and you'll see that the, we give you an example here, Here's the I.O. block, the safety I.O. block, armor, armor block guard I.O. Oops, went too fast. And this one should be the integrated safety. And you see it's just a DLR network with SIP safety. So there's no, no separate I.O. block here.
to put in the LP controller. And they even cover the device net. So this is another excellent resource again with with the Rockwell uh, literature library that you would want to go and and get that. And I think Rachel's going to post those links for you. And there's the standard. So these are good guides to work with. And we really appreciate you spending your time with us today. We hope you found the information useful. Uh, Rachel, I'll pass this back over to you at this time. And if there's some questions that we need to take. Great, thank you, Carol. We did get a couple questions and Eric has been responding. So I'm going to read out the questions and then Eric's response as well. Um, uh, Nabil is asking about a process with multiple conveyors and different HP. Um, and he wants to know which would be the most effective to use PowerFlex or Armor Start. Eric did respond and said the Armor Start um, used PowerFlex 40 in the standard and 4 in the LT. The main thing with Armor Start is that they are networked with an enclosed package and a disconnect. Um, did you want to add anything to that response? No, nope, I think he's covered it. Perfect. And then um, Mark is asking, how do they compare to 525? And Eric just posted a response and said they are similar, particularly with the new integrated safety version. There is more in the armor start, though, with the device logics um, and IO point and even safety IO. Well said. OK. Well, great. If you're watching this as a recording or if you have follow up questions for Carol, um, we'll give a few minutes here if you want to drop those in the comments section or you're always welcome to send those questions to us at the email address there on your screen, Mac and Mac live at MC MC.com. While we wait to see if you do have any follow up questions, um, I want to thank Carol for a great presentation today and thanks to Eric for being our resource out in the comments section. Remember to subscribe to the McNaught McKay YouTube channel for more industry content just like this. And as I mentioned at the top, we do a new topic every Wednesday at noon. So be sure to join us on your lunch break going forward. It looks like that is all in the comment section. So I want to thank everyone for joining us here today. We look forward to seeing you live again soon. Thank you everyone.